This is OmniFocus, an app I've been wanting to try for over three years after viewing a setup someone shared with me. We're gonna look at OmniFocus through the lens of getting things done. Meaning we'll look at the ideal settings for GTD, how to capture, clarify, organize, reflect and engage, and obviously conclude with a final verdict also based on pricing and trustworthiness of the company behind OmniFocus, whether it's a good choice for your GTD setup. Let's pretend to be Tanya the teacher and build a GTD setup for her with OmniFocus. Let's begin by looking at some of the ideal settings for OmniFocus when using it for GTD. If you go to OmniFocus at the left top corner, you can go to preferences. I will only emphasize settings that in my opinion are essential, but the rest you can interpret as personal preference. I recommend highly that you set up a shortcut for quick entry and for clippings. This will be super useful when capturing. Under organization, I recommend cleaning up inbox items which have a project. And the rest is personal preference as well. Under layout, I have everything turned on. Under style, you can also set up some settings to your preference as well as for dates and times, notifications, badges, and synchronization. Now the cool thing is you can actually use OmniFocus in a local first mode if you select don't sync, which means it will only store the data on your own computer. However, this does mean if you use OmniFocus on another device like iPad or iPhone, it will not take over the changes you've made here. For the second set of settings, we'll actually want to go to the sidebar here and navigate to tags. What you'll want to do here is add a couple of tags that signify the various contexts you may have when you execute on tasks. For Tanya the teacher, I've defined them as classroom number one, classroom number two, the work computer, the home computer. Now you may have more certainly, but this is just an example of course, and we will look at more concrete executions of these tags later on in the video. But the reason I'm showing you these tags here, and you can park them underneath a parent tag as such, is that we can set up perspectives, which you can do if you navigate to perspectives and go to show perspectives. Now by default, you will see things like the inbox, projects, tags, forecast, flagged and review, but there are a few that you can add and you can create your own. These are basically filters. And the most important filter, the most important perspective we wanna add here is the next actions perspective. This will show us a list of actions that we can execute on now. And here's how I've set it up. Under the perspective, create one named next, and then under filter rules, make sure that you meet all of the following conditions. Number one, it has a project which is active. Number two, it is not a project or group on its own. Number three, it is tagged with any of context. So this is the parent tag, meaning all the other tags included will also be included in this filter. And that's why we created them first. And lastly, the availability should be set to available. You'll wanna group and sort individual actions and group and sort them by tag. Once you're happy with your settings, you can save it, favorite it, and then it will show up on the left-hand side here. And that's the only perspective I've created, but you can see that it is highly customizable and perhaps you can create more valuable ones even for your own situation. Cool, now that our system is ready to go, let's start using it for Tanya the teacher. And we will first look at capturing to the inbox. Of course, you can press plus, make a new item into the current location, which is the inbox, which we've selected here. So if you press that, a menu appears. Let me just minimize this again. And we can add things like schedule English book presentations. We don't have to do anything else with it. We're just capturing it for now. Now, what if we are in another menu, such as the tax menu? Well, no problem. We can also add an inbox item here, which is with this button, add inbox items from anywhere. And here too, we can just add whatever we want, whatever comes up in our minds. Perhaps schedule holiday. 
And now when we go back to Inbox, both of those items are living inside of it. You can also use a keyboard shortcut, which is Command plus N to add a new list item. And I pressed it here, you see it happening in there. We can add something like pick up uniforms from Taylor. We're not done yet though. We also have a amazing quick capture option, which you saw in the settings. So if I'm gonna press that hotkey here with the app being minimized, it will still show the quick capture menu here. You can just add any task quickly and move on with what you were doing. There are a couple of Chrome extensions available for OmniFocus, which will enable you to capture web pages and emails. Now, I don't think these are actually official, but nevertheless, I'll show you how they work. This is the Save to OmniFocus Chrome extension. When I click it, it opens an empty tab in the background. Once you click on that tab, it asks you to open OmniFocus. And from there, you'll see the title of the web page as well as the link saved. So it's not the most intuitive way of working. You have to click a couple of times, but it does work. With the clipping functionality, what you could do is actually select a piece of text like this, then go right click, Go to services, and here you can do OmniFocus 3 sent to inbox. And what that will do is instead of the title of the page, it will save the quotes you just selected, including the link of the page that it came from, and save that. Now, lastly, there is a Chrome extension for Gmail, which will allow you to capture emails that you receive straight into OmniFocus. Again, I don't think this is an official one. But here's an example. Let's say Tanya the teacher received my homework, including an attachment. What she can do is then press add to OmniFocus here. And again, it asks me to open OmniFocus. However, this time we can tell it to always allow mail.google.com to open links of this type so that it won't ask us again. And from here, you'll see it saves the title of the email and the web link of the email. So it's not that it copies the message or uh, the attachments into a task, which is a shame, but nevertheless, it saves the link directly to read this homework and check it later, perhaps. People involved is also included, which I really like, especially if this is how you work with your students, for example. You can see that the sender is included. So for Tanya, this is perfect. She can see right away, okay, this student handed in this homework. I can check it from here. So now, Tanya has captured a couple of items into the inbox ready for clarification, but a big part of clarification is moving these items somewhere out of the inbox. And where are we gonna move them into? So let's first see how that works and then we'll see how we can clarify this in more detail. By going to projects, which is the place where you will manage your lists? And I've created many of them here for Tanya. There's the standalone items list for anything that doesn't belong to a multi-step outcome. And there's the projects folder, which contains subfolders pertaining to specific focus areas. And you can see that you can go very deep here in terms of nested folders. In fact, we have level one, two, three, four, five levels deep until we arrive at a specific project, which is creating a geography exam for the geography class that she manages, right? Checking homework, checking English homework, all for this one particular class that she manages. And then there's class B perhaps with other projects underneath it, perhaps for another subject like biology. So you are quite flexible here with how you can manage your lists here, which is nice to see as it can easily become too much. But by collapsing everything like this, it's easy to find what you're looking for. So how do you do this? By going to the left bottom corner, you can create a new folder or three types of lists, a parallel project, a sequential project, or a single actions list. And for this setup, I'm not gonna go dive too deeply into what the single action list means. I have created one here, which is for the standalone items, but we're gonna mostly focus on either sequential or parallel project. And we're gonna go into projects in more detail in a moment when we look at clarification. 
Another folder we have here is for agendas, which again pertains to her various areas of focus, like work and her tennis club, perhaps. What are some of the talking points that she may have with other members of the tennis club, like Stacy? Well, maybe when she sees her, she'll want to show her the new underhand hitting technique. And I can see that I've actually accidentally turned this into a sequential project. We can turn that into parallel because it usually won't matter which talking points we'll bring up first with anyone. But if it does, then we can adjust that here after the fact. And for work, we have things like the parent-teacher meeting. So you can also have specific lists for meetings instead of people and then use tasks and subtasks even to bring up the points you want to bring up. Here, for example, we have a project called parent-teacher meeting and within the project, a task for every individual kid whose performance you'll want to discuss with the set of parents that come to the meeting. And for Billy, for example, that might mean to stop watching my productivity videos in class. They're great and all, but you should also actually do things and not just watch things about how to do more things. Or for Tommy, it means to somehow get him to stop inventing words on English exams like flappadocious, hinking choo-choo, or skibbity pop. Under Sunday maybe, you can park anything that is no longer current. And you can easily do so, for example, if the biology curriculum project is not just on hold. Here, she's waiting for the list of students to create their curriculum for. But let's say she will no longer even manage any biology class in the future. Then you can just take it and drag it into the someday maybe list here. And now it's no longer cluttering your view here in the projects section. So that's easy to manage. Same goes for Higher Horizons. I've created a couple of parallel project lists for this, even though they're not projects. For example, goals. She may want to achieve a 95% plus graduation rate for her Class A, which has a deadline of December 31st of this year. She wants to get Tommy to speak English again. Remember, he's usually inventing all these words. We want to get him to stop doing that. But she may also want to become head of the tennis club. So you can use these lists and tasks in ways that go beyond the intended use case, which is just projects. Same goes for vision. She'll want to run her own school at some point. But she's really passionate about teaching and her purpose is to help children reach their full potential. Under reference, we have a list for the various areas as well and park specific items underneath there. Now, Tanya is passionate about tennis, so there's a list for that. And she's captured an article on the web using the technique we showed in capturing about the best tennis rackets for 2022, a buyer's guide. And it contains a link that you can click straight from within on the focus. Let's now look at how Tanya can clarify an item. And we'll do so by selecting one that we captured through email, which is this homework item right here as an example. So I'm in the inbox and I selected one item. And on the right hand side here, we have a lot of options for clarification. The first thing I'll want to do, and this is not something super intuitive perhaps, but I will want to add the name of the student to the title and nothing else. So here we see from the email capture plugin that the person involved is Lucas. So we'll add Lucas name here. And normally when you obviously clarify a task, you'll want it to contain a verb and be very specific. But in this case, we're gonna move it into a project. So we'll see the option here. And carefully, we can navigate to the Czech homework project for English. We can see all the folders it belongs to all the way down to the name of the project. So that is something I really like about OmniFocus. There we go. We can set the status of the item, which is either active, completed, or dropped. And we can add tags from here too. Now, in this case, we will want to check what context have we set for other homework checking tasks just to make sure it's consistent. And we can do that by navigating to the project itself. Projects, work, I believe it was class A, English, check homework. And you can already see that Lucas is now part of the list of students. They are all part of classroom number two. So that's where the 
homework is hypothetically handed in, so to speak. So that is the tag we will also add here by selecting it from the context tag menu. Now, if you want to get more specific, you can also estimate a duration here. Interestingly, there's no drop down menu or anything like five, 10, 20 minutes or something. But if you type like an hour, for example, it will automatically recognize it as such. And here you see one H signifying it, but we can also remove it just like that. We can defer a task as well, which is really cool. And we will see that in action in just a moment when we look at the next view. Basically, we can say this is not a next action until a day, week, or a month from now, or any other time interval that we set. And the same options are available for setting a due date, which we won't do in this example here, but you can see how easy that is. We can just add it or remove it. Now, this is a date signifying a timestamp. If you mark it completed, once you're done, it will add the completed date here. Now we're going to put this back to active and now you can see this is also empty again. If this is a routine, which in this case it isn't, but you can set it up super easily too here under repeat, you can repeat every week, specific days of the week, and you have a lot of options to modify the exact timing. You can add unique notification settings here if you wish. And of course the note was already there. Now we can remove the name of the student. And now we're left with the link to the student's homework. If we want to actually check, then we have everything we need at this point. So looking back to the project, we have Billy, Tommy, Cindy, and Lucas. These are four tasks. And again, I mentioned before, there's no verb involved. And that's because the project itself already clearly indicates what the verb is that it's about. It's about checking the homework for each student separately. And once we're at the engage section of the video, you'll see this in action and it will make even more sense. Now, this is an example of a parallel project. It doesn't matter whether we check Billy or Cindy first, they can all be performed in somewhat of a random order. Now let's look at a different one, which is to create a geography exam for our geography class. This is a predefined project with a couple of tasks involved that all follow each other. The first being making a list of facts from the geography workbook that Tanya may want to quiz her students on. It's something she will do in classroom number one because that's where the book can be found. Now, once that task is completed, the list of questions will need to be scanned into her work computer. And from there, she'll turn the list into a list of questions also on her work computer. This is Tanya's workflow and OmniFocus perfectly supports that. You can see these tasks here are grayed out. And by this symbol, this chain here, it also signifies this is currently a sequential project instead of a parallel one. If you want to add more details to either a project or a task, there is a note functionality, which is a bit limited, but it's there nonetheless. So now I press it on the right hand side here of the project itself. And sure, students have proper geography knowledge. And you can do the same for any task itself. Perhaps Tanya can note down any facts that stand out to her, for example. Given that OmniFocus has such a easily navigatable layout, reviewing your work can also be quite easy. If you complete a task, you can mark it complete like this. And any completed tasks will also show here in the completed view. So you can easily see what you've completed and when you completed it. If you want to do more elaborate things like a weekly review through a checklist, of course, you can just create a separate list for that. Like this, call it the weekly review, move it into a separate category here and go on and add your ritual items you want to from there. And of course, you can then set repeats to every week. What's also nice is that OmniFocus has a built-in reviewing functionality, which means that you can mark any project up for review. I'm navigating to a project now. Let's do the Purchase 25 
Rackets project, for example. And here under the review section, you can schedule when this project is going to be reviewed under the review view. So today is Monday, July 11th, and this project happens to be scheduled for review. But you can get very granular here on a per project level set up when it is supposed to be reviewed, how often it is supposed to be reviewed as well. And this could be useful for things like your goals, which of course we also have under the High Horizons view. So under goals, you can schedule a weekly check-in with your goals by setting it up here. That way you have a filter for what you want to see. Now, finally on to perhaps the most important and one of my favorite views to look at in on the focus, which is the next actions view. We created this at the very beginning of the video. And now thanks to all the work we've done for Tanya here in the background, we can finally see what it all amounts to, which is a next actions list that you can filter by context. Because of the various variables we've set up, the conditions, no things like goals or other non-actionable items show up here. Instead, it is only next actions that we can do right now. And for example, I mentioned before how this project has tasks without a verb in them, but that's okay because we can see the project any task belongs to already here, so we can make sense of it. Check homework for Tommy, for example. And when we're done, boom, that's only three items left to go. This was a parallel project, which means all of them show up here, which it should. Now we can do something cool here, which is by filtering for only classroom number one. And if you remember, we had a project that is sequential about creating a geography exam. Let's say we complete this task. Watch what happens. Saw that? I marked the item complete and suddenly a new tag appeared, which is the computer work tag. And what wasn't visible before now is visible because it is the action that is next in line. So not only do you see what you need to see in terms of the tasks, but the tags also move with that dynamically. And now that an item has opened up because we completed the first task in line, we now have the next item in view for creating the geography exam. And now we completed that and there we go, voila, the third item shows up. So it's a super intuitive way of working. And if we navigate back and forth, this is something we set up in the settings. We can see that the previous tag of classroom run is no longer visible because we have no more next actions that belong to this tag. Super powerful. The investment for OmniFocus is a pretty serious one with $9.99 per month which is quite a lot higher than various other productivity tools. But they also have a traditional license, which grants you lifetime access for $99.99. Meaning if you're planning to use it for the long term, this is always going to be the better choice. More importantly, they have a 14-day trial that you should definitely use to make up your mind before making the investment. As a company, the Omni Group is well known within the Apple ecosystem. They have various other pieces of software and they've been around for a long time. Surprisingly, their ratings on the App Store are not as high as I thought they would be with averaging around four stars. And it seems that their updates to OmniFocus 3 in recent years has been a bit polarizing. If you look at the ratings, a lot of them are five stars, but a significant amount are also one star, citing a lot of these issues. So it is extra important that you make up your mind through the trial first before you go all in. All in all, OmniFocus is a solid choice for GTDers who want to use an Apple application. Leave your experiences or questions about OmniFocus down below in the comments. You can also subscribe to my newsletter to receive a weekly productivity tip every Saturday morning delivered to your email inbox. And with that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.